thank you for joining us today. We are we are live. And we are here with uh, Dan from Insight Vacations, and he's going to talk us through some amazing Italy itineraries. And, and I'm going to turn it over to you right away. Thanks, Dan. Sounds great, Nora. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, hope you're staying safe. Hope you're staying warm. Uh, here uh, where I'm at in Wisconsin, we had our first uh, 15 degree day. Have, haven't had that for about three weeks. So hopefully, uh, Everyone's staying warm. It felt like spring today, but hopefully everyone's staying warm, doing well. And I appreciate everybody uh, taking time out of their day to learn a little bit more about uh, Insight Vacations, really who we are, how we're different, uh, why, you're, why it's a, we're a great choice for your next dream holiday, your next dream vacation. And then also to talk about my absolute favorite destination I've ever been to, which, as Nora said, is Italy. I love Italy. It's, it's one of my favorite places I've ever been to so much that Italy has to offer. So very excited to be here to talk a little bit more uh, about that. So just to know who the stranger in your screen is, uh, as Nora said, my name is Dan Peeler. Uh, I've been working with Insight Vacations uh, for a few years now and have traveled quite a bit with them in those couple of years. Uh, and I currently call Madison, Wisconsin, or a small town outside of Madison Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, home. Uh, so it's great to be here today. And again, uh, thank you all for being on the call. So what we'll do a little bit uh, of an itinerary of what we're going to be covering today. We're going to keep this relatively short and sweet. I know you all have very busy schedules. We'll keep this around 30 minutes or so, but we're really going to go through three things today. Number one, talk a little bit about uh, Insight Vacations, what you can expect when you go on an Insight Vacations tour. We'll talk about who we are. Maybe some of you have been on Insight Vacations tour in the past. Maybe some of you have never heard about Insight Vacations. Uh, either way, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, about who we are uh, and what makes us different, what makes us unique. And then we'll get into the theme of the today, the event. We'll talk about why Italy, why it's such a great place to go to. I know uh, I heard in the beginning, a few of you have been to Italy before, which is great. Um, I, one of the great things about Italy is you can go there many, many, many different times and have a completely different experience. Um, and and it's, uh, I truly believe that. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, a handful of the reasons why Italy is a great place to travel to why it's always uh, at the top of our list for, for travel destinations. And then we're gonna go through, we're talking about some of the itineraries, but I'm gonna actually take you to uh, a, one of our shorter day-to-day -day itineraries that we have through Italy called Easy Pace Italy. And again, for the sake of time, I could probably talk about an itinerary for about two hours. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about some of the highlights on the day-to-day, -day, just to give you a little bit of an example um, of how traveling through Italy is different with inside vacations and kind of what you can expect uh, on an Italy tour with us. So that's what we'll cover today. Uh, and then again, we'll have some time for questions at the end. So who is Insight Vacations? Now, really who Insight Vacations is, we are an upper premium guided tour company specializing in giving you, our guests, an authentic immersive travel experience. That's who we are. We really believe that when you're traveling to a destination, there's no better way to travel then really immersing yourself into the destination, into the culture. So we like to say there's five reasons to choose Insight Vacations. Number one, Insight Experiences. Really what Insight Experience is, is this is something that's included again, but it's something that's what, what we like to say is ungoogleable, something you couldn't do anywhere else, something that's unique to Insight. So for example, uh, on one of our Italy tours, we actually get VIP access to go up the Bramante staircase. We go to Rome, the Vatican, we go up the Bermonte staircase so you can actually walk where the Pope walk. Something you couldn't do anywhere else. That's an example of an insight experience. Something that's immersive, something that's ungoogleable, which is a little bit hard to say, but something you couldn't do somewhere else. Number two, delicious, authentic dining. Again, we believe there's no better way to immerse yourself in a destination than trying the local delicacies, trying the local cuisine. Food brings out so much when we're traveling. That's one of the reasons to travel, right? Trying the local food, whether you're in Italy, Ireland, Greece, every country has a different type of specialty. That's what makes traveling so great. And we really believe that at Insight, that there's no better way to really get into the destination, immersing yourself in the destination, than trying that food. And we have a lot of different dining options. We do nice dining at Michelin starred restaurants. We have things where we dine in people's home. We have farm to table dining, things like that. Lots of different dining experiences. Number three, travel and stay in style. So again, with Insight Vacations, we are guided tours. So one of the great things about Insight Vacations is being upper premium. 
we're not going to be on a, uh, on a bus the whole time. We're going to be in a business class luxury coach. So we'll talk a little bit more about that soon, but a little extra leg room, a lot wider, a lot more time to relax. We'll talk about, again, we'll get into that a little bit more, but also the second part of that staying in style, we want to make sure that we're staying at the nicest hotels possible. We're talking four, four and a half, five-star hotels. And we always want to be centrally located. We want to be in the city center. That's what you get on an inside vacation store. We want to be in the heart of the action. When you're in some of these cities like uh, Venice or Florence or behind me in Milan, we want to make sure that we are in that city center. So we're right by all the cafes and all the shops and everything like that. So we will always have that at Insight. Number four, small groups. One of the great things about Insight is that we do have small groups. Max will be 40. The average usually is around 33 people on a tour, but we also provide small groups as well with Max is 24. And we also provide travel opportunities where you can just make your own travel bubble, travel with friends and family, and you can go on your own private guided tour as well. We offer that too. So we have lots of great small group options. And then number five, seamless stress-free travel. That all ties into our travel director. We'll get into that a little bit more. But one of the great things with Insight is every guided tour that you have will have a uh, travel director that is absolutely incredible. They all speak the local language. They're not there just, they're, they're not there just to be, you know, help you out 24 seven. Of course, that's what they do. They're there, they're going to they're take care of every need, but they're also there to educate you and talk to you about the history, talk to you about the destination. Again, they all speak the local language. They're so intelligent. They know everything about the destination you're in. They're absolutely incredible. It's hard to do it justice just talking about it. You have to experience it, but our, our travel directors are absolutely wonderful. Now, before we get into Italy, elephant in the room, we need to talk a little bit about safety protocols. If you're like me, you've been inside the last 12 months in your house and you cannot wait to travel again. That is me, my family, my wife. We're so excited to get out of the house again and just travel somewhere. Just get out. We would love to go to Italy anywhere we can. But to do that, we need to make sure we're doing it safely. Now, uh, I will say Everything changes week to week in terms of the pandemic when we can travel again. We don't necessarily know exactly what date we're going to be traveling again, but we know we're going to be able to travel at some capacity here relatively soon, and we will be able to do it safely. So some of those protocols that we are having in place, and again, we'll go through every single one. If you have more questions, definitely talk to your travel leaders, advisors. They'll be able to give you the whole breakdown uh, point by point of what we're doing, but just a few that we are doing. Number one, when you go on a guided tour with Insight, you'll have a team of three people from Insight. One, you'll have your coach driver, coach driver who's trained in wellness protocols. Two, you'll have your travel director who's also trained in wellness protocols, hygiene protocols, things like that. But three, you're going to have someone called a well-being director that's going to go on the tour with you. The well-being director is there for two reasons. One, to take care of any needs that you have. Uh, if you need a mask, if you need sanitizer, if you have any questions, any concerns, or they'll help you out with that. But two, when we go into different cities, we go into different hotels, we have different experiences, inside experiences, that well-being director is going to go to that location pre, uh, beforehand, before the group goes there, and vet it out, make sure everything is compliant by our guidelines. So that way, you don't have to worry about a thing when you're on our tour. We want to make sure that when we're traveling, we are being as safe as possible, but we also don't necessarily want you to worry about your safety. We want to have other people do that for you. So we want to make sure that you're in good hands every step of the way. Hygiene protocols and distancing. Now, I always get these questions. Dan, we're really excited to travel again, but what does that look like? Do I need to wear a mask? Do I need to wear gloves? Do I need to uh, have a vaccine? And, and to be honest, we don't necessarily have all those answers yet. Once countries begin to open up, Every country will have different guidelines and we'll address that when we know more information. But I will say that uh, we will do everything we can what we're complying by the World Health Organization's guidelines, make sure that we are distancing, wearing masks, et cetera. And we will have all of those uh, PPE materials on board the tours as well. Last one, last one I'll say on this is 24 seven incident response. We have a team that's available 24 seven. If something does go wrong in the tour, whether that's a COVID related issue or any issue in general, that's the medical reason, et cetera, we have people that are on the ground on our call center that are going to be there available every step of the way to contact insurance, contact family members, work with local authorities to take care of every need necessary. So that's a little bit more about what we're doing uh, on the protocol side. And again, won't we'll go too much more into that, but if you do have questions, um, definitely talk to your travel leaders advisor. They know all that they're fantastic uh, and they'll be able to help out every step of the way. But we are, again, 
very confident that yes, we will be traveling at some capacity and that we will be able to do it safely. So that's a little bit about inside vacations, who we are and the safety protocols that we have in place. Pivoting now to the main event, let's talk about Italy. One of my favorite countries I've ever been to. And, and I wanna put the slide up. This was last, my last vacation because believe it or not, before everything happened uh, in the spring, my last vacation I went on was to Italy, <laughs> which is uh, quite the coincidence. But um, I've been to Italy twice in my life. And I truly believe that uh, Italy is one of the most amazing places that you can go to. Uh, every place is different. Every city is different. Everywhere you go, there's just so many things to experience. Whether that's the, the culture, the food, wine, if that's something you like as well. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, there's so much that Italy has to offer to the traveler for everyone's different interests. And, uh, you know, again, there's so many great views, so many, so much great scenery, so many great cities, so many things to do. But the number one thing that stood out to me about Italy was not all that, but actually the people. It was the people in Italy. The people there, in my experiences, were extremely friendly, extremely accommodating. I mean, I necessarily don't think about that when you think about what some of the reasons to travel to Italy. But that's what really stood out to me was just how friendly people were, how welcoming, how helpful they were to go out of the way to help you with any questions or issues that you had. It was it was an amazing experience. So I always say Italy is a destination that at some point in everybody's life, they should have the opportunity to go to. Uh, it, they really should. Um, it's just an amazing place. So that's a little bit about my story. Again, um, one of my favorite destinations, if not at the top of that list. So moving on, talking about fun facts. I always like to start with a few fun facts about Italy, but just a few that always stood out to me. The Vatican City in Rome is actually its own country, believe it or not. So the Vatican City, smallest country in the world, its own little country, its own little establishment. The Sistine Chapel, which you get to see on a majority of Inside Vacation Tours, welcomes over 20,000 visitors per day. Again, that's before pandemic times, but that's a lot of people. That's over 7 million people a year. One of the highlights when you're in Rome, you have to see the Sistine Chapel. And then the third point, I thought, well, I always think this is interesting. Italy, and there's a reason they call it the old country, has the oldest population in Europe at 46.3 years old. That is the median age. And I believe that's second in the world, right behind Japan. So um, definitely an older population, but just an interesting fact on that. Why travel to Italy? Why not? I, I, for those of you on the call that have been to Italy before, I'm sure you have your unique stories or unique reasons what really made Italy unique and special to you. Um, for me, here's our about here's a handful of reasons. Oh, there's about a hundred of them, but. Uh, so many different reasons. A lot of the history, the ancient Roman ruins, the culture, so much history is in every different city. Every city is different. Rome is very different than Venice. Venice is very different from Florence. Florence is very different than Milan. Every city has its own unique history. There's just so much to explore. There's so much to learn when you go to Italy. UNESCO World, Her World Heritage Sites, um, the Cinque Terre, for example, uh, on the Western Sea, Western side of Italy, uh, is a great UNESCO World Heritage Site to go to. They offer that as well. The art, the culture, so much that Italy has to offer uh, in that regard. And then also, again, I mentioned this a little bit already, but the amazing culinary experiences. It truly is a foodie paradise. Now, um, again, I'm from Wisconsin, so uh, I'm typically not a pasta, pesto type of guy. I enjoy cheese, um, a good brat once in a while, but I, I had more pasta in Italy in my uh, last vacation in a week there than I think I had in my, my whole life. So uh, it's fantastic food. It, there's something about it. And again, if you are a wine fan, they have the finest quality of wines. Um, the wine there is incredible. Uh, it's, it, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's very different. It's very clean. It's very fresh. And you don't feel terrible the next day either after drinking. It's absolutely uh, amazing. So those are just a handful of reasons to travel to Italy. So next, I want to just kind of walk you through an itinerary that we have through Inside Vacations, just to give you an idea of how you experience Italy differently with Inside Vacations and why going guided is such a great way, taking a guided tour through Italy is such a great way to experience the country. And I really believe that I've done Italy once um, by myself with my wife, um, completely um, kind of making our own plans as we go. And then I've also done an inside vacations tour through Italy, uh, which was very different 
and a little bit nicer, a lot nicer. <laughs> Everything was planned out, didn't have to worry about anything. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about what you can experience. Let's briefly go through the day to date. So this itinerary that I picked out to talk about today is one of our top sellers, one of our best itineraries uh, that we have to offer called Easy Pace Italy. Now this is a 10 day itinerary, very simple. You can see here, three nights, you're gonna fly into Rome. You're gonna have three nights in Rome in the Vatican City. Then you're going to go up north to Florence, have three nights there. We're going to take a little bit of a detour to the wonderful town of Pisa, the Tinkalini Tower. And then we're going to go and have three nights in Venice. Now you think of Italy, if you ever Google in Italy, a lot of the first pictures you'll see are pictures of Venice and the beautiful water and the buildings in the background. Venice is my favorite city in Italy. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but this is a wonderful itinerary, short and sweet, nine days long, 10 days long, nine nights. Um, but again, you're going to hit some of the big three, Rome, Florence, and Venice. Absolutely amazing experiences on each one. So day to day. So day one, this is where we're going to fly into Rome. And we're going to fly into Leonardo da Vinci Airport. And again, it's a little bit of a long flight if you're flying from the Midwest to Italy, whether you're flying out of Minneapolis, uh, Chicago, et cetera. A little bit of a long flight. You'll probably um, go from Newark or somewhere on the East Coast there or Atlanta. But Long flight in day one, it's all about getting in, getting your transfer from the airport to your hotel. And yes, you will have a private transfer and getting settled in. So we all we offer those transfers from the airport to the hotel at various times of the day. Uh, and then that night, the only thing we're going to have, because, you know, we're a little bit tired, we're a little bit jet lagged still, is we're going to have something called a welcome dinner. Now, the welcome dinner, in my experiences with my uh, inside vacation tours, one of my most favorite experiences that we have. Because the welcome dinner is the first time that you can meet the rest of the people you're traveling with. So if you are traveling with uh, maybe another, your significant other, but you don't know the rest of the people in the group, this is one of the most fun times because you get to meet the rest of the group. And uh, it's always fun because the welcome dinner, we're going to have it at a nice restaurant. Um, you're going to meet your travel director. They're going to do a speech. They're going to do a toast. Um, but it's fun because everyone's a little bit tired. No one knows each other yet. So it's a little bit quiet at first, but I always like to say after one glass of wine, uh, everybody becomes best friends really quick and everyone's very excited to talk about what the rest of the journey uh, will hold, what they're most looking forward to. It's a really, really great time. You get to meet some great friends, um, absolutely uh, amazing experience. So day one, again, all about getting settled in and we'll have that welcome dinner and then you get some rest at night and it's on the day two. Day two, this is where we really get hit the ground running. So day two, we're going to have a lot of great experiences right here in Rome. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to go on a tour with our local expert, and we're going to have a tour throughout the Vatican Museum. So here we're going to see all the different museums. But one of the highlighted experiences that we have is we get VIP entry into the Sistine Chapel. Now, Sistine Chapel, this is a place you have to go when you go to Rome. Uh, and it's known for, for its Renaissance frescoes by Michelangelo. So that's when you walk in, you look up at the ceiling and you see all the amazing paintings all over the top of the ceiling. It, it's hard not to get a sore neck. You have, you have to look down every once in a while, but it's absolutely incredible. And one of the most amazing places you can visit when you are in Rome, when you are in the Vatican City uh, and we get that VIP entrance in there where it's no one else, you get to skip the line. It's just you and the group absolutely great experience. So that's really what we're going to do then. And then we're going to move on uh, as we're going to visit places like St. Peter's Basilica, for example. So this is where we're going to see one of Michelangelo's early works. Um, in St. Peter's Basilica, this is, this is a really great spot to see too, because this holds a unique position in the Christian world. Now, Catholic tradition holds that the Basilica is the burial site of St. Peter, chief among Jesus' apostles and also the first bishop of Rome. So there's a lot of significance here when you visit the Basilica, but that's definitely one of the highlights on that day. Day three, we had the tours. Day two, day two is very full. The tours, the VIP entrance, we're going to explore the museums. Day three, this is your day at leisure. Now, this is one of the great things about inside vacations is, yes, we're going to have things scheduled every day, if not most days, we also want to give you time to explore the area on your own a little bit. So day three, easy pace, day at leisure. Now we will have optional experiences that you can do. For example, you can see in your screening, you can stroll through the boutiques uh, of Villa del Corso or check out some of the designer stores uh, that Rome has to offer because they have quite a few. Uh, but it's also your time to 
take in the local cafes, walk around the city, do a little bit of shopping, try a lunch somewhere. Uh, and it is really a little bit up to you to check out things. One of the def definitely uh, experiences that I would recommend is going to the Coliseum. Your travel director will be able to help you get tickets to that, help you get there, um, whatever you need to do. So our travel director is there on those days of leisure to kind of help point you in the right direction uh, on things you want to do. But day three really is your day uh, on your own to explore as you wish, which is a really nice mix. Day four, now we're going to Florence. So we're gonna to journey to Umbria. We're gonna travel from Rome to Florence. This is about, uh, about a three and a half, four hour drive, depending on how many times we stop. Uh, and, and we will stop many times because we wanna get out and walk around a little bit and see some of the amazing view that the Italian countryside has to offer. But the thing that we're gonna do on day four, even though this is a little bit of a travel day, we are gonna stop in a small hilltop village called Orvieto. Uh, and this is an absolutely amazing place, very striking, um, absolutely gorgeous. And we're gonna have a highlighted lunch here. We're gonna have a really special lunch. We're gonna have a farm to table dining experience here. And really what farm to table is, is we basically source in local ingredients. It's kind of the whole zero kilometer philosophy. And you get to try local ingredients in Italy. You're going to try some fine wine, some classic wine. You're going to try some fresh pasta, pesto, any ingredients that that area has to offer. So we're going to have a really great dining experience there. Now, day five in Florence, this is where we really start going again. So day five here, we're going to have something called Insight Choice. Now, Insight Choice, this is where we get to personalize your trip a little bit. Uh, you can actually choose from one of two included experiences. You can't do both, but you can choose from one. One, you can see the Academia Museum with an art historian to see the Michelangelo statue, or you can go wander the market stalls on a guided shopping tour. The choice really is yours. So you have those two experiences that morning in Florence. That afternoon, we will go on another tour with our local expert through, to, through Florence, see some of the main highlights that Florence has to offer because it is an absolutely beautiful city, uh, but it is something we will do that day. Now, a couple of pictures at the bottom here that I put on, this talks about the Insight Coach. So I mentioned at the beginning, one of the best things about Insight Vacations is we don't travel in a small bus, we travel in a nice business class coach. Now, uh, on day four, when we're traveling from Rome to Florence, it's a little bit of a travel day of traveling four hours. But uh, one of the great things about this is traveling is fun when you do it with Insight Vacations, when you're in a nice large coach. So uh, unfortunately, we're not a person, so you can see me. But if you did see me, you would know that I'm not normal size. Uh, I'm six foot seven, so I don't fit in uh, buses. I don't fit on airplanes. I don't even <laughs> I don't even fit in my own car. Uh, but I fit very comfortably on our luxury coach. That's a picture of me there on the bottom left. Plenty of legroom, very comfortable. But I always like to say, whether you're four foot seven or six foot seven, uh, you're going to be extremely comfortable. You can relax, take in all the great views. Uh, that Italy has to offer when we're traveling through Umbria uh, and seeing that beautiful, beautiful landscape there in Italy. So that's a little bit too about that coach. Day six, now we're gonna take a little detour. We're still gonna stay at Florence that night, but day six, we are gonna have a leisurely morning in Florence. This is called a relaxed start. So really with this, instead of getting up at the crack of dawn, we're on the coach by say 8 a.m., we get a little bit of a break. We're not going to go on the coach until 10 a.m. So you have that morning to have a little bit of coffee, check out some of the cafes once again. But then later that day, we're going to take a trip to the west of Italy, and we're going to explore the beautiful, famous town of Pisa. So yes, when you think of Pisa, you think of the Leaning Tower. We'll definitely go there. We're going to have a tour with our local expert once again. Uh, you can get that famous photo of you holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa that, that oftentimes people take there. So you have your opportunity for that. Um, Pisa, it's a, it's a wonderful town. It's it's absolutely beautiful uh, and definitely a great experience. Later that afternoon, we're going to have once again another farm to tiny day, farm to table excuse me dining experience at El Pajaggio Farm, and we're going to learn a little bit more about wine and olive oil production. We're going to have all those fresh ingredients shipped in once again, but we're going to go on a tutorial and learn about how some of these local people make their olive oil, make their wine, what goes into it, the fine detail. It, it's, it's a really fascinating experience. So that's, again, an example, one of those inside experiences that we have to offer. Really great experience that day. Day seven, this is where we're going to travel to Venice. So again, another little bit of a travel day. We're going to make our way all the way to the northeast side and go to Venice, where we're going to spend the last few nights there. 
the hotel that we are going to stay at, I mentioned again, when we were with Inside Vacations, we will stay at the nicest hotels available that are centrally located. This is the Hilton Molino Stucky, which has a beautiful view of the Geodeca Canal. It's an absolutely amazing hotel to stay at, right in the heart of Venice. Absolutely gorgeous. So here we are. Here we are in Venice, day eight and nine. This is our time to explore and see what Venice has to offer. Now, I mentioned again, Venice is my favorite city. I might be a little bit biased, but I think it's just absolutely beautiful. I love the water. I love the canals. I love going around on gondola. It's, it's just such a great experience. So uh, day eight, we're going to get going. We're going to have all of those tours. Again, we're going to go on a private launch uh, to St. Mark's Basilica. So we're going to actually take, uh, take a boat ride through the water. We're going to go to St. Mark's Basilica. We're going to see Doge's Palace, the Bridge of Size, all the big sites that Venice has to offer. Uh, I will say my favorite one is going to St. Mark's Basilica. Um, I think this is really great. But one of the reasons this is significant is that uh, it holds the body uh, or the relic of St. Mark. Uh, which again has a lot of significance as well. So that's a really great place to see, but um, absolutely beautiful place. Venice, everywhere we go, there's something to do. It's hustling and bustling. Um, I absolutely love it. Another thing we are going to do that, that afternoon is we're going to have a Venetian glass blowing demonstration. So we're going to go to a local artesian shop. He's going to do the, he's going to talk to you about the famous art, the historical art of glass blowing. It's really, really interesting experience. We learn a lot doing that. So that's another thing we will be offering that day. Now, day nine, this is, again, kind of your day at leisure. So just like we had in Rome, just like we had in Florence on those third days, day nine is going to be your day at leisure. And there's so much to do uh, in Venice. Uh, you can go to the island of Verano and check that out. Uh, maybe you want to visit some of the 90 churches um, that, that are in Venice. But I also recommend just, just getting lost and, and really just exploring the town. Tra talk to your travel directors. They'll have plenty of different sites you can see, different things they can, they can kind of direct you to. But it's such an amazing place. There's so much that Venice has to offer. Um, definitely one of my favorite places I've ever been to. That afternoon on day nine, I should say maybe more of that evening, uh, we are actually going to go on gondola through some of the canals. It's the only thing we're going to have really scheduled that evening with our group. Go through the canals on the gondola rides. Uh, which is an incredible experience in itself. And then we're going to have something called a celebration dinner at La Fenice Restaurant. Now, celebration dinner, in my experience, this is just like the welcome dinner, but this is a little bit bittersweet. This is the last big dinner we're having with our group, and it's always at a nicer restaurant. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's bittersweet. You're excited to go home. Uh, it's been a great adventure, but you're sad to go. You're sad to see uh, the people that you met, the people you travel with behind um, but again, it's, it's a wonderful experience, and, and we always talk about all the great adventures we had over a few glasses of wine, which is always fun. Day 10, to Rivadochi, Venice, and that is where we get our private transfers back to, back to Venice, and we're going to fly out back home that evening. So our travel director, oftentimes they have, that's Deborah, uh, my travel director, when I went to Inside Vacations Tour, uh, they'll often have a little parting, parting gift, maybe a treat for you. And then our driver, that's Enrico on the right, uh, will always be there to say goodbye to. So uh, that's, a, that's an example of going through in, in Italy with Inside Vacation, an example of one of the itineraries we have. Now, we offer 13 different itineraries to Italy. That's one of the smaller ones. There's so many great ones. And again, Italy has so much to offer. Um, there's so many different sites to see just outside of Florence, Venice, and Rome. Uh, again, there's Milan in the, in the background here. There's the Cinque Terre. There's Lake Maggiore, Lake Como. Um, not sure why I'm listing off lakes, but there's so many different great places to see uh, in Italy, uh, Siena, uh, just so many great places. So how do you experience Italy differently with insight? Uh, again, those insight experiences, getting those VIP entry in the places like the Sistine Chapel, St. Peter's Basilica, having those days at leisure. Yes, you have structure, you have there to take someone to take care of you every step of the way, but you also have a little bit of free time to personalize your trip and explore the area as well authentic dining we're all we're going to have those farm the table dining experiences we're going to have those nice restaurants like the welcome dinner the celebration dinner and then of course there's the coach with extra leg room one of my personal favorites and then our travel director as well so i mentioned again we do have over 13 different itineraries that go through italy um, these are some of our famous ones that we have road to rome that's a 12-day tour uh, that starts uh, in milan goes all the way to rome Best of Italy. This is going to cover everything you want to see in Italy, including uh, the Cinque Terre. It's going to take you to the Lake Maggiore as well. 
that area, you're going to see Milan. And then European Dream, that travels through Italy and also hits a little bit of Switzerland. So you kind of get the best of both worlds on that one. But those are just three examples. Again, we have so many great uh, itineraries that go through Italy, and we highly recommend um, if you are interested, not just in easy pace Italy, but another itinerary through Inside Vacations to Italy, talk to your travel leaders, advisor. Uh, they'll be able to help you out every step of the way. Outside of that, with Inside Vacations, we go all over the world as well. We go through Europe. Uh, we go through all the great countries that Europe has to offer. And then we're also here in North America with some wonderful national park tours, plenty of places out east, some of those metropolitan areas, some fall foliage tours, and again, up in Alaska and also through Canada. So uh, again, if you are interested right now, I will say, and, and I'm sure Nora would agree with this right now, is the best time to book to get the best pricing. Um, Exen, we don't know exactly when we'll be traveling again, but we are confident we'll be traveling again here in 2021. And 2022 is going to be busy. And when we have that green light, a lot of pent up demand, it's going to be busy. So now is the best time to lock in your price. If you are interested, we do have a great offer going on right now called Get Back to What You Love for Valentine's Day. Uh, and you can save up to $600 per person on your tours, which goes a long way uh, on some of these tours. And that's for travel all the way through the end of November 2022. Last thing I will say too, uh, and again, thank you all for being on the webinar today. I just want to just lastly end with the, the importance of booking with your travel advisor. Uh, Nora and her team at, at Travel Leaders, the advisors there, the agents are absolutely incredible. Um, personally, I have too many friends and family that uh, didn't use a travel advisor and they lost a lot of money and, and really had some issues on their trips. And there's just so many great reasons to go through travel advisor. Right? Inside Vacations, we believe in, in using a travel advisor for your next dream vacation. And Nora's team uh, is top notch and, and is absolutely amazing. So we definitely recommend any questions you have, uh, definitely go through them. They're so knowledgeable, they're passionate, but we will help out every step of the way. So thank you all again. Uh, Nora, I think I kept that under half an hour, close to it. It went a little bit over, but uh, no, thank you all good. again. And, uh, I think we'll go through any questions that came through. I could listen to you talk about Italy all day long. I just love it. <laughs> um, I, I do want to open it up to any of you who are listening in. If you have any questions, you can put them in either the Q&A or the chat. Um, and, and we'll hold it open for a few minutes. And then uh, otherwise, you'll get a uh, copy of this recording tomorrow. Uh, and you can always respond to that email. Um, and I can get you in touch with one of the advisors who can help you. I don't see any questions yet. But let me ask you, um, Dan, you, you've mentioned that Venice is your, your favorite. You, you just love it. Um, I'm curious about uh, Florence, because I've not been there. You know, what were the, some of the favorite things you did in Florence? Oh, gosh. Oh, Florence, you know, Flor I, okay, you're right. Venice is uh, my favorite place because it's absolutely, beautiful. there's something about the water uh, with the backdrop and everything there. But I, I think what really stood out to me uh, about Florence is, is some of the history there and some of the local, the little local places you could go to. You know, I mentioned a few times, uh, when you're in these cities, you, you got to go on your own a little bit and, and check it out. You need to try some of the local cafes, uh, some of the local restaurants, and just just kind of walk around and see what it's like. And Florence really stood out to me. I mentioned it before, the people are what made Italy really special in my experience. And some of the nicest people I ever met were in Florence uh, on my on my on my tour. I'm sure they're they're nice everywhere in Italy, but Florence really stood out to me how friendly the people were, and, and also. Just going through some of those side streets in Florence, Serpentine Streets, checking out some of those local cafes. It's, it was just all very unique to what Florence was all about. Every little place had its different niche. And, and I just thought it was a really special place. Um, it, it's hard to describe it when, you don't, when, you're, not, when, when you're not there and in, in the middle of it right now. But it just is one of those places that, you know, again, you think of Italy, you think of Rome, you think of Venice. Florence is a really, in my opinion, kind of one of those underrated spots where I think you need to check it out and just has so much history and such, such a uniqueness to it, which really made it stuff to me. So that's my long-winded answer for you. <laughs> we do have a question here. Um, if, if you book a date and then we don't feel things are safe, what are the arrangements for rescheduling? And, and do you have a sense yet for when things might be safe to go? 
That's like two very good questions. So if you want, if you have a date you have in mind, you can definitely, you can book that, but we also have a very flexible policy. If you don't feel comfortable going on a date, we can also, without penalty, change your date to any time you want. That can even be in 2022 as well. Say you book something for September uh, of later this year, and hopefully we'll be traveling by then. If for some reason we get close to that, you're not comfortable, we can switch that over to 2022 no issue whatsoever. So that's something we can definitely do. We're very flexible. We have to be flexible right now, right? Just with how everything changes on what we think is a day-to-day day day basis, if you ask Nora and I. So, yeah, we, we are um, all learning to be flexible, that's for sure. Yeah, there is absolutely. another question here about um, Pompeii in Southern Italy. Do you have any tours that would really uh, hit those places? Yeah, we do. We actually do have some uh, some tours that stop Pompeii, and we also have some that go to Sicily a little bit too. Um, we, top of my mind, I think we have three or four that touch on Sicily. So we do have some that go down that area. I don't think there's one that necessarily focuses just on the southern boot, um, but you, a lot of times you'll fly in the Rome, go through the southern part, and then over the Sicily, and then a little bit up north maybe too. But yes, we have plenty of tours. Uh, again, you can check out our website. We have all the tours listed out, the itineraries. But we, again, talk to your travel advisor uh, at Travel Leaders. They know this stuff like the back of their hand. So we do. And, and, you know, a tour that either starts or ends in Rome, you know, work with your advisor. We can add extra days for you to go mm-hmm. to the Amalfi Coast uh, on your own yeah. uh, after the tour or something like that. So there, you know, you can you can get the best of both worlds that way. Yeah, we definitely recommend that, too. If you want to do a few pre-nights or post-nights, pre-nights for maybe the jet lag a little bit and then some post nights just to check out something a little bit different that the itinerary has to offer all by all means definitely go for it i think that's a great great option agreed all right well i don't see any other questions dan i want to thank you for spending uh the afternoon with us and for all of you attending thank you so much um i will be sending out an email um probably tomorrow that will include a copy of the recording. So if you want to share it with your friends um, as you're starting to plan your trip, uh, that is fantastic. And then reach out to me and I'd be happy to get you in touch with an advisor. Perfect. Thank you all for having me. I'm going to go make some pasta now for dinner. So have a Uh, great night, everybody. (laughs) Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.